Okay, we're good. Okay, well, thank you. <clears throat> continue. It's asking me to continue. So, hi, everyone. Um, as people join in, Peter will hopefully capture them for um, the minutes. But um, calling the meeting to order at 5.03. Uh, let me do a quick roll call. We have Joshua Campbell Torrance, Carol Bruce, Julie Lemos, Charlie Ford, Don. How do you say your last name, Don? It's Geit. Geit, thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Jesse Smith, Jill Fletcher, and myself, Chris Trazik. Did I miss anyone? Okay. Here comes Judy Keene, so. And Judy Keene will be joining us momentarily. Hi, Judy. You're on mute, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, uh, so if we can just order business, uh, approval of the minutes for the April 27th meeting that Peter sent out earlier via email. If you could all click on the reactions and, well, first I need a motion. So if I could have a motion, someone raise their hand to make the motion. Julie Lemos. Thank you. And Josh I got seconded. A, I got a correction. Um, yes. Go ahead, Charlie. Under the, uh, shop, under the shopkeeper's report, it says Charlie Forzik uh, said that the focus was on bicycles. That was actually me. Okay, so we have one correction. Do we have any other corrections? I'll make that correction. Uh, I've become Carol Grace this month. Oh, you're Carol so Grace again? <laughs> uh, this is the first time. 5D. Uh, that may have been a typo. I'll make that correction. My apologies. It's okay. I've been called other names. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any other corrections, edits, additions, deletions? No. All right. Uh, yes, Judy. I, I don't think I'm listed as being present for the last meeting. If I'm looking at the right line, it doesn't have an X next to my name. Judy Keene. Um, it, um, it does. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. It does. It does. Okay. Yep. All right. Good. All right. I, thank I don't you. know if it matters, but I was not listed as being present or absent at the last meeting. And you? I was, I was absent. My son had a. Right. Okay. Thank you. I'll Any make other that correction. corrections? All right. Uh, so, can my two motionees, if you're okay with uh, motioning to accept as corrected? Okay. Second. Thank you. All those in favor, please raise your hand, stick your thumb up, use the reactions, take your pick. Uh, we have everyone approving the minutes as corrected. Uh, any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, open items, EV charging station. Peter, do we have any update? No, we're still waiting for the funding um, information. Have, okay. have not received anything new yet. All right. Visitor map and kiosk, the Connecticut Humanities quick grant. We uh, had our second meeting, um, starting to make some progress. We've got another meeting on June 8th. Uh, to really start drafting the content and pulling together uh, the visuals. So uh, we are uh, making good progress and should be on uh, track for the schedule. Ooh, great. Uh, Heritage Commission membership and appointments. So um, Peter has double checked what the appointments are on the Heritage Commission. We are still missing a Silas Dean business and a Old Weathersfield non-retail business representative. So I am looking for suggestions. <laughs> uh, Chris, what, if I could just jump in, in lieu of yeah. if we're, if we're going to pursue the uh, cultural district designation, mm -hmm. uh, they have specific uh, membership um, criteria for who are your members. Um, 
So I would keep that in mind as we search out new members, particularly uh, they have to come from the arts and or the history um, area. So I was thinking if we could get um, maybe somebody from the, um, the arts, um, from the arts academy maybe. I was just gonna say I would do the arts academy. For the old Weathersfield business, not retail? Yep. And then um, that might be enough to give us enough representation because the, the arts, the history, the museum folks, um, the chamber folks hit some of those bells as well. So mm -hmm. just, um, and I don't know if Betty Standish is interested or not, but obviously if mm -hmm. she was representing the Arts Academy, that might be a good, a good match. Okay. I think that's a great idea since Betty participates in a good chunk of the meetings anyways um, and is very active. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, do I have to formally submit that to... Gary? It actually has to go to the Council. Republican and Democratic town committees, and then they have to go through that process. So I don't know what Betty's affiliation, if any, is. So, <clears throat> but unfortunately, yeah, it's a council appointment rather than a town manager appointment. Okay. I will send an email to Betty asking her if she is interested in becoming a formal member, and then I will send it to um, I'm going to send it to Gary and tell him that he needs to send it to the appropriate reps because okay. I don't know who they are. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, any other suggestions in terms of Silas Dean business? I'm just trying to think if there's any arts. Cultural. Well, uh, how about Gabe D'Amico? Um, he owns the building at the corner of Maple and Silas Dean. And he's interested in improvements in the Silas Dean. Maybe he'd be interested in improvements throughout Weathersfield for tourism or heritage. I think if we form a Silas Dean Highway Committee again, he's probably going to want to be the okay. Fo focus his fate is his time on that. Um, I have nothing to offer except a crazy harebrained idea, and I only know this because it's just a, a small world. There's a business. Um, on the corner of Silas Dean and three that does scientific animation. And I only know about them because my wife used to engage with them when she was doing this for the Jackson Laboratory. And she was like thrilled when we moved to Weathersfield and here's this world renowned or at least nationally renowned scientific animating business in town. Could be a stretch, but if they're doing animation, then maybe they have an interest. They obviously have an interest in science, but maybe they have an interest in culture. I don't know anyone there. I don't know anything, but I'm just like. I'll bet they're in D'Amico's building. No, they're across the street on the other side. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. And then isn't there a sound company that does sound systems? Yep. BK Sound Systems, yep. Yep. Does that count? I don't know enough about them to if they uh, if it would count or not, but that's that's a good. I'll write that one down too. But these people have to be interested in right. serving on the committee. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Those are a couple of at least some suggestions, and hopefully we'll fill both both needs. So maybe we'll be able to find someone. But I'll follow up with Betty. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, anything new on the promo video? No, I have not had uh, time to work on that. No problem. Uh, certified local government. Uh, Peter and I uh, spoke at the historic district commission meeting right after our last meeting. Yes. Right. It was the same night. Um, and talked about the certified local government uh, because a lot of the information needs to come from the historic district commission um, in order for us to submit all the paperwork. So um, at this point, uh, the commission asked Kim to work with us and get us all the information. So we are, Peter's just working on that and waiting, correct? I did send Kim a listing and I kind of divvied up 
Yeah. I mean, it was heavily weighted to the HDC having to produce some of the documents, but uh, I did take on some of the responsibility. So I'm waiting to hear back from her on uh, those items. Okay. Uh, so the nice thing about the certified local government is we are then eligible for some additional funding that's only open to certified local governments. So it's in our best interest to get it. Um, all right. Um, continuing to move on, CCGP, Peter, there was- I think, I'm not sure, but my previous experience has been that it also could help the, the museums raise more money if we have a certified local government. Oh, you, I think you're right, Joshua. So yes, thank you. So, uh, so if you have any influence with the uh, Historic District Commission, please use it and, and encourage them to uh, let's get it done sooner rather than later. <laughs> so just, just Jill and Joshua, if you happen to, you know, have any influence there, we'd appreciate it. Damien's not on tonight, so. <laughs> Okay, uh, CCGP projects, there was the public meeting on April 28th. Um, anything to report, Peter? Was it good, bad? It was, it was well attended. I think uh, all good. the comments were uh, positive uh, in nature. People were very supportive of the projects. We did update them on some changes that the town engineer is suggesting. The one uh, thing that we have to be mindful of is uh, some of these intersection improvement projects uh, could potentially uh, bust the budget. You know, there was a total of, I think, 11 projects. The question now is whether we will be able to use the, the funding that was available uh, for all projects or whether we might run out. So we're, yeah. we're going to have that conversation with the state and just make sure we're not going to run afoul. We may supplement the grant with some town funding to stretch the dollars a little bit further, but in general, uh, it was, you know, it was probably 25 people on the call and uh, it was uh, mostly uh, positive feedback, suggestions and explanations of why we had to do things a certain way. So um, we're moving into the next phase, which is the design phase and the uh, bidding phase. So we have to go through that process uh, as well. So. And did they talk at all about prioritizing in case there is an issue with funding? We're going to focus on the intersections, obviously, yeah. where the money, you know, could uh, is going to have the probably the biggest bang for the buck. So, and then uh, we'll see what's what's left for the remaining. Uh, those aren't the only ones we'll be able to fund, but it's just that we're really focusing in on those uh, as the big projects coming out of this. There is some additional money uh, that we have for road improvements and things like that. So we might be able to mix and match and stretch the dollars a little further. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Okay. Annual report. Hey, I actually sent the draft to Peter this afternoon. Nothing like a deadline because I have another meeting and I didn't want to say I didn't do it. <laughs> so. Um, I can confirm that. <laughs> uh, so Peter, if you don't mind um, at least taking a look at it first and then we can just send it out to the rest of the commission. Yep, I will uh, do that. For any comments before we send it to the council. Yep. Okay. Uh, bicycles on Maine, Carol. Carol Bruce, our, our fabulous organizer. <laughs> I think we've had a wonderful time on the table. At, when we finish this uh, whole month, we will have had 13 different people volunteer, some for more than one shift. Uh, thank you, Charlie, for Charlie did two shifts. And uh, as of Sunday, when Chris was there and I was uh, sitting and visiting with her and enjoying my visit with Chris, we passed 301 people that we have talked to and given information too. If people just walk by and say, hi, how are you? Enjoy the bicycles, we do not count it. It has to be someone who comes to the table and looks at the spreadsheet that I created with the different activities on it. And I would say that that has been, you know, I know it's low key, low tech kind of a thing, but it has given us all on that table, something to talk about and refer to 
and people have taken a photograph of it as a means of having that kind of thing. People, uh, I think, would like to have had something that they could have downloaded, but they've been very happy with us highlighting what is there going on. Uh, people have been blown away by the experience. Uh, they wish we can do it again. We certainly hope we're going to do it again. And from my, my vantage point with the 51 hours we have put in, I would say that I am so pleased that for the number of people who've walked by and the different places we've seen these bicycles, like on Knott Street and Ridge Road, I have not seen or heard of any vandalism that has gone on. I think people have truly appreciated the whole experience and people have come who have never been to Wethersfield and have said, we are coming back. And, you know, we've tried to talk about the things that are in the future. I've mentioned, you know, the fact that Web Dean Stevens is opening up with their new building and is touring on the 4th of June and that other activities like, uh, you know, the scarecrows are coming in the fall and the porch festival and all of that. Um, I, it has been, it has been, I think, for those of us on the table, a very good experience. And I hope that the shopkeepers feel that they have benefited by us being on it. Because by and large, the people who have serviced, the 13 people who have done it, are either my friends or there are also my friends who are on this commission who have stepped forward. Thank you all very much. Yeah. So I think it's, it was, you know, we, there's one more weekend to go, but I think it's been a great event. Um, you know, just like Scarecrows, I'm hoping it becomes an annual event. I think it's lots of fun. Yesterday, Sunday, we saw what, like 50 bicyclists going down Main Street? Oh, yes, with flat tires. <laughs> <laughs> with flat tires. <laughs> Um, but, you know, it was families, it was young professionals, it was couples, it was retired people. It really was a nice diversity of people just getting outside and enjoying the weather and eating at the restaurants, visiting the shops. Main Street Creamery must have done a booming business. On you got Sunday. it. <laughs> I do have one suggestion for Carol for next year. I'm assuming, I'm, assuming I'm doing it next year. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> That the shopkeepers who are benefiting from Bikes on Main should participate at the table. I think well, that on a rotating basis, maybe, but have at least one person who has a vested interest in Bikes on Main. You know, I thought about that, Judy, but you know, they're doing their part by producing what they have at their at their location points. I'm sure the creamery couldn't have done any more. He was already doing his share. And I think that um, Nutmeg Home and Heart of the Country had knocked themselves out to get the, uh, the crafts people every single solitary Saturday, the bicycles for the tricycles for the kids. Uh, I do think that the people who are in the old, uh, old Weatherstone shopkeepers, that's their part, that's what they have done. And I thought it was wonderful that we could support them because I always thought that that was the impetus for the commission is that we would support the people who are on Main Street. Okay, I, I just feel it felt as though you had done a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I had the time. Yeah. And Judy, time. we can ask them, but I think Carol's point is well taken in that a lot of them are small businesses and they yeah. may be, they're probably inside working their businesses, but they don't may necessarily have, have the time. They may have a spouse or a child or a yep. friend who would like to do it. I think it would be nice if they um, contributed somehow. Yeah. And the type of person that you want on that table is sort of like Chris. Uh, it's a person who reaches out to the public. Yep. Uh, it, is, it is not do, doing you any good to have someone sitting on the table who just sits there because you have to say, hi, I hope you're enjoying the bicycles, blah, 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 and draw them in kind of thing. Uh, I, I think that's very important. And most of us are quite loquacious, so it's not a problem. I hope we can give some more thought to some of the add-on activities too that aren't just retail. I think that the wheelmen were a hit. 
Yep. Yes. And people yeah. were asking about them. Yeah. And um, two of them came back the following weekend just to ride around because they had such a nice time. And also, um, you know, Betty Standish did do the, um, the uh, Loving Vincent film at the Keeney Center uh, as an add on because of the, there were so many people coming to town. And I think that was a good idea. It was, you know, we didn't get as many people there as we would have liked, but it was a nice event and it, there was a specialness to it. Um, so maybe next year we can think of some other things that aren't just come shop and spend. It's more, yeah, spend some time here enjoying cultural assets. Right. And we did put a follow up with that, Jill. Music. I think if we could figure out if we could, if we had the time to create a QR code and a page listing all of the events um, would make it easier for people to find out about them. You know, we had the QR code for all the restaurants, um, but we didn't have a QR code that listed all of the events. So just something to think about, because it's the same thing for scarecrows. If there's right. going to be different events on different weekends, it'd be nice if they're, Jesse's already putting the information together. If it's on one page and we just, you know, send them to the website where they can look it up online easily, uh, that would be beneficial too. Because then they may say, oh, look, next weekend is blah, blah, blah. We should come back. So. We wish Jesse, we did you have open. a lot of hits? <laughs> Jess, did you have a lot of hits for your Great Elm for your calendar? Uh, yes, there was a lot of uh, traffic uh, uh, on social media for the bikes on main yeah. um, and the other events. And I, I haven't checked out the website uh, hits yet, but I'm pretty sure it's up there. And um, I, have, I have both my kids today and uh, I'm trying to keep them entertained and quiet. So, um, but yes, it did very well. And there's a lot of uh, blogs. Um, uh a lot of blogs coming out right now and they're mm -hmm. great and they're yeah they're all great they're coming from all over people coming from all over new england and stuff just come to visit just so they can do a vlog about this um so it worked out great i think yep it did joshua you were going to say something yeah i mean we i was in the courtyard quite a few saturdays and you know as we get ready to be open and kind of milling, you know, getting the shop ready and whatever. But uh, it, I mean, so many people came into the courtyard. Uh, I mean, it was just astounding. So I know, you know, we really look forward to next year when we can be doing events and mm -hmm. be open and so yeah. on. It, it, it's a really, it's just a really cool, cool event. Yeah, I agree. Can I? All right, uh, Peter, Betty Standish has joined us. Yeah, we I want to backtrack that. on our, uh, Agenda, oh. we'll do, we can do it offline. <laughs> sure, just one other thing, closing out the bicycles on Maine. Yeah. The one other thing that uh, came out of this whole event uh, was um, no, no individual or organization is responsible for um, new trash cans. So I know it's kind of a boring topic, but um, litter control came up and um, it was mm -hmm. one of these things where everybody was pointing to other people in terms of uh, if we want new trash cans, replace the existing trash cans. There's nobody who budgets for that uh, and sort of owns that. So I, I'm not sure it's it's the Heritage Commission, but that's something also that needs to be um, on somebody's agenda for going forward, whether it's a capital improvement, whether it's a, a grant that we pursue, but we found there are um, gaps in the uh, system and some of them aren't located in the best places. So something to think about for um, future consideration. Well, you know, and if you're gonna talk about that, you should also add uh, the availability of public restrooms. Yes. Particularly when you've got a lot of people walking around um, and, and the hours. And, and last year, didn't we end up having to subsidize porta potties? We did, we put one in the in the Keeney parking lot for um, a portion of time. We were thinking about doing that this time around, but we weren't sure what the need would be and uh, did not do that. So I didn't hear 
any feedback yet from the merchants as to whether that was a problem or not. But um, the shopkeepers are going to have a follow up meeting to kind of debrief and see what we need to plan for for next year. So, yeah, the kidney restrooms were open on the weekends, right? May, but the, during scarecrows, it wasn't this year. Okay, so that's, that's why you that, did it. That's then. why we did it. Yep. Yeah. But okay. maybe having a, a, a portal it across the street someplace so, or <clears throat> maybe uh, in the fire department lot or someplace so that there's more than just inside the Keeney. Well, and we should also think about making sure that it's known that there is a bathroom at the Keeney that people can use. Um, so if we, you know, if it's on the listing, public restrooms are open, you know, such and such a time at the Keeney Center in the rear of the building. Um, so people know, but. Okay. Good idea. Yeah. Um, so Would put a uh, historic looking privy somewhere since I have a collection <laughs> of privies. <laughs> well, isn't your privy open for use, Joshua? The one no, in, in no. the garden? <laughs> <laughs> um, Peter, are the shopkeepers going to invite other people to the kind of that debrief on the bicycles on Maine? I, I, I think so. I haven't really talked to Joe about the details of that, but uh, okay. we did talk about having a a follow-up meeting and getting everybody involved and getting getting feedback. So I will um, okay. encourage him to to open it up to uh, non shopkeepers. Yep. Okay. Great. I also have one more suggestion, and that would be uh, Peter kind of alluded to the fact that there are bikes all over town. Yeah. And people kind of embraced it. Um, I think that next year it should be made. Uh, you know a part of the plan to encourage people in other areas of the community to put out a bike too. It would keep people wandering around or, you know, driving around to see, oh, did I see another one? Is there another one up ahead? You know, I think it would be kind of fun for kids in, in other areas of town too. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think, so we did see one family with a scavenger hunt. Oh, good. Which was good. I don't know how often it was used. And Jesse, I don't remember who was distributing the scavenger hunt. Was it Main Street? I have no idea. I didn't know there was one. Uh, Keeney had an announcement outside the front door. I thought yeah. it was a middle school. Yeah, one of the education programs, I think. Oh, okay. Um, but people seem to like that, so, okay. Yeah, I made one for my kids for uh, scarecrows on Main and then as I was doing that, uh, people were approaching me like, where'd you get that? Like, oh, uh, can I get one too? Uh, what store do I go to to get that? And it was just asked about a lot, yeah. so. Okay, so another thing, just kind of, if it's not that hard to create, it's another activity to keep people engaged, especially with families, so. Cool, okay. Heritage Way, Connecticut Greenway's nomination. Peter, yay. Yeah, we just so got we, noticed, right? Yeah, we were uh, we're pleased to announce that uh, two two communities in Connecticut are getting the uh, confirmation this year. Us and Portland, I think it is. So there is a um, ceremony. Unfortunately, it's also June fourth, and it's in Brookfield, I think. Yes. Um, so um, we're going to obviously be present there to accept uh, the award. Uh, they also give us uh, a special commemorative signage to include on along the heritage uh, uh, way and uh, it opens up some funding uh, for us as well uh, to mm -hmm. help enhance the heritage way so uh, we were very pleased much of the uh, thanks should go to Kevin Sullivan yep. he did he did the heavy lifting on the nomination so just so everybody is aware yep. uh, of that partnership um, but uh, yes we're very pleased I'm not sure who's going to uh, accompany us to Brookfield on Friday, but nevertheless, we will we will be there. Yeah. So, yeah, no. So we should uh, kudos to Kevin Sullivan, and uh, thanks to Bike Walk Weathersfield. It's really turning out to be a great partnership, um, along with the shopkeepers. So, uh, the more kind of collaborations we can work on, the better. I think that's just terrific. Okay. New business, uh, CTM contract. Peter, we gave you authorization to go ahead and enter into the contract because we weren't sure what the pricing was. Yep. Can you just update us? 
Sure, we did We did enter into that contract. We uh, the contract period is uh, starts June first and runs through the uh, beginning of November. Uh, we contracted to the tune of ten thousand one hundred and eighty seven dollars, just for the record, and uh, we set up a PO, so that is in place. They will bill us uh, uh, monthly, and um, so we are good to go. The only uh, loose end there is we. Uh, do not have a supply of um, spring, summer uh, rack cards, but I have been working with a vendor to get those updated. The only updates uh, I was going to make was to add- um, The bikes on Main and the Porch Fest, right? And the Porch Fest. I had to condense some of the language of the other featured events. So the five featured events that we will now have on the card are the spring, uh, festival at Heirloom Market, Bicycles on Main, uh, Porch Fest on Main, uh, the Open House Day, and then the Heritage Weekend. So uh, they sent me back a proof today. So probably by tomorrow, uh, I will um, send it out to the printer and we should be just about right for June 1st for the printer to get those and send them directly to CTM. Are we changing any of the pictures? Uh, we certainly can, but I... Um, I'm just trying to think if we got some new ones from um, the photo contest. We that certainly, was spring-like. Yeah, so the, the present photos on the card have the uh, Webb Dean Stevens garden. They have um, the reenactors. Uh, yeah an action shot shooting their muskets, um, picture of the first church um, tower, and then a picture of the uh, heirloom heirloom market. So we could certainly uh, update them, but I was just hoping to get this back in print. Yeah. And I probably, I'm probably only gonna order enough to get us through, uh, you know, this season so that we could change that all out again next year. Okay. Comments, thoughts? Adding something, I want a picture from the bikes on Main would be great. I agree. But maybe next year. Yeah. Yeah, if we need to get this out soon, um, you know, and time is of the essence, we can just make sure we add it for next year, so. Yeah. And okay. I think we'll have a lot of photos still coming in. So yeah. we we'll probably want to pick the best, best one. Okay. All right. Cultural district designation. So there seems to be some interest from you guys to pursue this uh, designation. It does require, I've looked over the paperwork. It does require uh, a resolution from the town council and it does require either a new commission or an existing commission to take on uh, the responsibilities. I was thinking it would be added to your responsibilities and that's why I was suggesting we make sure that any new appointments fit the criteria uh, for the cultural district. Um, there's no specific deadline for submitting it. If we are going to do it, we have to submit a letter of intent and then we need a bunch of documentation that support the uh, nomination. We need to designate an area. So it might be the kind of project where if we form a small committee uh, to work on it, uh, we could probably knock it out in a couple of meetings. Okay. All right. Um, I think it's, I think it makes sense your suggestion that it be rolled into um, our, the Heritage Commission's roles and responsibilities. It doesn't make sense to create yet another commission when it's, there's going to be so much overlap um, between. So I would ask if anyone's interested in working with Peter on that. Um, let him know. I will tell you, he's really good. He doesn't make you work very hard. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you just got a volunteer from Joshua because I see a thumbs up over there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi, this is Betty. Um, so I, I would just advocate for um, the triangle coming up to Wethersfield Academy for the Arts just to like extend that cultural area because mm -hmm. we also have Solomon Wells where there's this summer farmer's market and all the you know houses along Hartford Avenue. The um, Jim Woodward's group um, 
goes and uses the um, the trust that area that becomes the conservation trust. He uses the back end of the cove. Yeah, and so there is also that bikeway that goes through Cove Park. Um, so I, I think that the cultural um, geography could include Hartford Avenue. Yep, I think that makes perfect sense. Thank I you. Be I think Good Betty just also Betty. volunteered for the committee. So oh, yes, did I do? <laughs> You were going to get an email from me after this meeting anyways, Betty. So okay. just say yes, because you're at most of our meetings already. What's the difference? Uh, as long as Peter does all the work, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I could send emails. <laughs> it, won't, it won't be a lot of work, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else on the cultural district designation? I okay, just so have a question of if we have any knowledge of any funding that's affiliated with that? It's not clear. Um, I think there is, but I, mm -hmm. it's such a new thing that I don't think they've really kind of rolled it out yet. Um, so I, I just briefly went through yeah, some me too. of the uh, criteria and I, I didn't see anything specific, but I thought I had heard that at one point. So, okay. Um, and yeah. Peter, is it the, the state tourism that's managing that? I hit the link and it, it, it said no file, an error. So I, I don't know who ultimately. There was there was a link in the in the criteria, and it, it didn't it wasn't working. So I don't okay. know who it is. Um, it took me to the list the governor's, which I don't think it I don't think it is. And I don't it, it maybe it's Connecticut Humanities, but I wouldn't I don't know. I don't know either. Sorry. So that'll be part of what okay. we have to figure all out. Okay. All right. 21-22 budget. I really don't have anything to report. There's some conversation about whether some of the Recovery Act funding could be used to offset uh, the local budget. The, the criteria for spending that is very narrow and challenging to fit into our general budget. So I think they're waiting as long as they can uh, on approval of the budget to see you know, what they can find out and what guidance is coming out of uh, the state to help with that. So, uh, and obviously that would significantly impact all of our budget items. And um, I know they are, if, so if that does not happen, there will likely be some impact to our budget. Okay. All right, any other questions for Peter on the budget? Okay, any other new business? Chris, the only other things I wanted to bring to your attention is the town is um, pursuing um, improvements to the parking lot behind the fire department headquarters. Mm -hmm. And we are working with the neighboring property owners to maybe see if we can more efficiently use that overall area for parking. Uh, we are experiencing some challenges down there at that end of uh, Main Street. So uh, we are actively uh, engaged in uh, pursuing some funding as well as starting a conversation with the folks we need to get approval from to do that. Actually, tonight, the town manager, the town engineer, myself are on the um, HDC agenda to just give them an overview of what we're thinking about, make sure they don't have any big uh, concerns uh, yeah. about that. So uh, we are working with one, two, three, four, four different property owners there to see if yeah you know, we can consolidate uh, and just make better use of that area back there yeah. um, and make some uh, public parking available. And is the parking subcommittee working with you on that as well? No, it's really uh, at this point, uh, just the town engineer, myself and the, okay. and the property owners. So, um, and then I, I sent out everyone an email earlier about WTNH is potentially yeah. going to do a promo, uh, eight things to do this weekend or whatever they're, they do this every week or so. So it looks like we will show up on that. We sent all of that to, I guess her name is Sarah Cody. So uh, if I hear any more, I'll let you know. So we can um, maybe uh, get a copy of that for, for a reuse. Yeah. And there is a lot going on this weekend. So you've got you know, the spring festival, you got heritage weekend, you got the, you know, uh, veteran ceremony. And then obviously you've got 
uh, the last weekend of bicycles on Maine. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, that'll be nice free publicity. So okay, moving into reports, uh, we're going to go in order this time. I think I flipped the order last time. So Judy, you're up. <laughs> Um, well, there's a lot going on in uh, economic development in Wethersfield. Um, I'm just going to list down some of the new businesses that are coming to town. Um, Chase Bank on the Celestine, uh, Puritan Medical, the Puritan, where the furniture store was, the medical offices are, are that's moving along. Popeyes at the corner of uh, Jordan Lane and Celestine uh, in the Price Right parking oh. lot. Um, How is that what they're building? That's Popeyes. <laughs> um, Cedar Mountain is improving, has added to their um, area, of, or I guess they're working on the uh, uh, what's going on there. Uh, there's a new gra a granite showroom on the uh, Turnpike. Um, 147 Main sold to a new owner. That's Charlie's Old Digs. Um, 280 Main, the wellness center has been sold. Uh, the Masonic, I think that was sold or it's in the progress. Um, Atlas Tile has a new owner. So mm -hmm. there's there's a lot going on. Um, I'm not going to keep going because there's so many. Um, uh, the planning and zoning is meeting uh, or was meeting. I guess they probably have already met. Um, there's a public hearing on fencing in town. I guess there's been a lot of issues with fencing. Uh, June 9th is uh, the chamber is going to be having their back to business um, 5 to 7 p.m. at the Wednesday Country Club and all are invited to buy tickets. Um, the beautification committee in town needs volunteers. They're the ones that do the little islands and different areas of town um, and plant the flowers. Um, I think that's it. Okay. No, there is a there is a lot of going a lot going on, which is which is great. I mean, for a long time there was nothing. So yeah. Yeah. you've been busy, Peter. Yes, he has. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there'll be a new facade improvement with, that was brought up at the last meeting um, uh, application soon. So those things are all good. Okay, Melinda's not here tonight, um, so we'll just we'll wait. And then Jill, you're up for WHS. Sure, thank you. Um, so what we have coming up, obviously, is for Heritage Weekend, is we're going to have the, um, the Colonel John Chester Fife and Drum Corps will be back. This is all um, from 10 to 4 on Saturday the 29th, and the museum, of course, will be open. And then um, it would be really fun, and I know people we're going to miss the parade this year, so it might be fun to hear some drums and some, you know, some cannons going off and some of that noise that we like during the parade time. So I invite you all to come on down. And then um, we are revisiting the HD house, seeing what we can do with the Herbert Dunham house to kind of bring it back up to speed. And there's an active search. People could sort of weigh in what they think we should do with reinterpreting that museum. And that, that um, link is on our website. Okay. I hope you can still hear me. My internet connection is unstable. I was just gonna say, take your video off. It'll help. Oh, okay, sure. So we were, you able to, you, were you able to hear that or no? Yeah, uh, you cut in and out a lot. Oh. Okay, so Heritage Weekend plus a link for Herbert Dunham House um, reimagining it is yeah. on our website. Okay, all right. Anything else? All right, Joshua. I know you talked about it at the beginning before we were officially started, so now you have to repeat. Yeah, nothing much is going on. You know, just sort of the the usual. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a really hectic time. I know that. Um, the last couple of meetings, we've updated you on some of the plans, but just quickly, um, again, we open June 4th, 9.30, the ribbon cutting, join us in person or virtually uh, at, after the ribbon cutting or 10 o'clock, whichever comes first, I guess. The museum is officially open, will be open all weekend long, uh, free of charge. 
Um, your mission going forward will include tours of the houses as well as uh, the access to the galleries. Uh, starting in July, we'll have a, a Friday night courtyard music series, which we're looking forward to. Uh, very just drop in. It's not really a concert. It's just people will be performing and you're welcome to come bring a lawn chair, uh, listen, move on to linger, uh, but very casual. We also have the theatrical performances uh, starting later on in July. Um, I just thought I might take a quick opportunity to tell you about our opening exhibits, because I don't think we've kind of reported to you about what mm -hmm. our opening exhibition schedule is. Um, we have an introduction exhibit that tells people about the history of the, of the site as a historic house and, and, and explains to people who are the colonial dames um, and their, their service. Um, we've been really, it's really interesting how much they've done for soldiers, for example, uh, and veterans. They have a long history of supporting veterans uh, across the state. Um, so that is one exhibit, just across from that exhibit is an exhibit that Jill, Jill helped us uh, connect to a photographer. We have a wonderful black and white photography exhibition on our privies. Um, uh, and they look uh, places of ease, places of solitude <laughs> is the title of the exhibition. Um, and it's a really great uh, exhibit on, on, the, on the beautiful privies. Uh, and then our uh, main exhibit is treasures, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, hidden in plain view, treasures of the Webb Dean Stevens Museum. Uh, so as you go through the historic house experience, you see objects in the context of the historic house. The get new um, Anne Cookrow Gallery allows us to display our objects and tell the, their stories in their own right uh, without the clutter or the, the visual context of the houses. So we have some of the great treasures of our collection on display. Uh, and that's, uh, it's looking, it looks great. I, just to be honest, it looks really spectacular. Um, and then finally, one of the members of the society uh, named Gay Ayers is a, uh, one of the leading collectors of miniature books, modern miniature books, not historic miniature books, but modern miniature books. And her book collection has exhibited all over the country and now will be on view six of her uh, premium books, if you will, or best books, will be on view at the Webb Dean Stevens Museum. And they're just exquisite, incredible pieces of art. Um, they're con it's, it's really marrying contemporary art uh, and book making all in one. And they're, you're going to be blown away by these six miniature books. The miniature books is no more than two and a half inches tall by three inches wide or something, some such ratio. So those are our four exhibits and then a new experience for the web house. People will be going through the web house as a self-guided tour um, moving forward. So you'll be able to experience that on your own. Uh, and other than that, we're just uh, counting the days with nervousness and excitement all at the same time. So June, June 4th, we really can't wait to see you all uh, back, but also back uh, for the first time in the new new facility. Great. Yeah, we're looking forward to the opening. Okay, Jesse, last but not least, how are we? We're good. Um, I made a new uh, video, uh, Web Dean Stevens uh, in spring, and that was uh, just basically outside Web Dean Stevens. Uh, I caught a couple of the bikes. The crowd went wild. <laughs> yes. Got a lot of fans. He obviously really likes the video. <laughs> Apparently so. And um, yes, and I was thinking of working on um, a farmer's market video uh, for the farmer's market. I think that would be really great. And do one on uh, bikes on Maine. I only got a couple of days left for that, but I would like to get that together as well. Um, also, I would like to go through the list of what I have for um, really quickly. Uh, for, um, 
the newsletter for the events. And if I'm missing anything, if someone could just tell me, I think this would be an easier way to doing this than asking people what events are there. Yep. So, uh, so I have education center opening celebration. I have tree walk, which is uh, Cedar Hill Cemetery. I have annual Keen Foundation 5K run walk. walk. I have that's, CT that's trails. Virtual. That's virtual this year. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's the 5th through the 13th. Yep, yeah. 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 Uh CT Trails Day weekend, which it's the 5th and the 6th and a bunch of varying things going on. Um, the Pop-Up Craft Fair on the 12th. Annual Bicycle Festival Show Swap. Uh, Eternal Home of Cedar Hill. Yep. And Summer Youth Art Program. And that's what I have. Right. So we are also, I don't know if this should go in there or not, but um, somebody has come forward with a scholarship program. Um, okay. Yeah, for, for the summer youth summer youth program. It's it's a need based scholarship. You know, okay. Is it on your website? Yeah. yeah, we'll post it shortly, probably in the next Okay. Day. Because I can put that and put that under uh, like news and announcements on the side. Yeah, yeah definitely. We'll send that to you as soon as we get together. So this okay. Is, this is just, you know, it's, it's What's that? June, is it June only? It's June only. Okay. Okay. But if you but if you have any if you have anything past June, please email it to me. I you know the sooner it's on um, the calendar, the sooner it's on. Uh, social media the sooner it's on uh, the websites, the better it is. And, and you have the Keenan Coolers um, concert yeah. series, right? For July. I don't think I have it in stone yet. Okay. So we'll get you that. Okay, please do. Do you have Connecticut Open House Day? I do not have that. Okay. I, I, is that in June? June? It's usually in June, right? You see, mm -hmm. second weekend, right? It, yeah. I assume we're participating. I haven't heard from anybody. Is is uh, the Historical Society and Webby and Stevens are they participating in that? I think so. Okay. I yes, I do believe we are. Okay. I will check with with Cindy, but it's Saturday, June twelfth, twenty twenty one. Okay. Um, at June twelfth. Uh, um, it's no, but it, it it won't be any good unless I have uh, who's involved. So, yeah. But thank. You. So, if anybody that is involved can get me their information, if they're open for free or whatever, what's going on, whatever's going on, uh, please let me know. And uh, I think that's uh, about it. Uh, I, with the uh, Heritage Weekend coming up, I um, I boosted that for uh, for an ad on Facebook. Um, it's bringing up uh, our, uh, our presence on Facebook a bit. Uh, we lost quite a bit um, through, because uh, last month was really big. And I, um, I did a boost, uh, uh, a website with a, really, uh, with a really good picture and it went, uh, it was pretty big. We gathered, about 40 I think it reached 40,000 people wow. so that that's and that was just that one uh boost uh within a month so it's kind of hard to come back from that so right now I see the stats and they're all in the red saying we're down from last month but compared to what happened um it's you know that's normal um we, should, we should, we're probably still up or at the regular spot we would be now yeah so okay four thousand is great though for a boost That's yeah just terrific. one just one boost i have i have two i have two um going on right now and they're nowhere close to forty thousand um it, it's I, it sometimes it just it, a, a one picture really really matters and uh, if it's a really good one, it it, it will it go it goes out there. Captures everyone's attention. Yeah. Yes. 
Okay. All right. Uh, I think we've got everybody. Um, so if there is no other business. Chris, can I just add one other quick thing? It dawned on me. I, I, I think, I, well, the Webb Dean Stevens Museum, we're applying to the, the governor's announced a $15 million initiative so that families and children can visit museums yes. for free this summer. Free for the summer, so, yeah. So we're applying for that grant to get that funding. So um, I, I'm, a, I'm going to assume the Historical Society is doing the same, but that could be a really great thing to promote the rest of the summer. Just, you know, if we get the grant, it's a great opportunity for families to come, you know, to one town and see two museums potentially for free. Yeah. yeah that is good. Yeah, thanks for reminding us about that. I'd forgotten about that. So. Yeah, our museums are free already. So we always have to figure something out with that. But um, I think we should start charging, actually. <laughs> you could start charging for the summer and then get the grant to waive the fee. <laughs> exactly. Make things a little easier, right? We need a toy store. Oh. Mm. There you go. We used to have one. We still have one. Yeah, there's yeah. one in the Dallas Dean. Tom's train? No, golf no, course shops. Right. Isn't there like Zens or something? Yeah, it's oh. a new owner. Okay. I don't and have any little kids they, anymore, so they are a... pretty good. It's a nice toy store. Yes, okay. it is. All right. Okay. There being no other business. Oh, look at this right on time. 559. Uh, next meeting is June 29th. Peter, do we know whether that will be in person or not? So thanks for bringing that up. Um, the town, the, the next council meeting, the first council meeting in June, the council has uh, decided to do an in-person meeting. Uh, I have not heard whether that is a mandatory or an optional uh, thing. So um, I'm not sure what everybody thinks about that. We probably won't be able to technologically do both right. at the same time. So it's either going to be Zoom or uh, in person. Not uh, there's probably not going to be a hybrid. I, so I'm curious what people um, what people think about that. That's so easy. <laughs> yes. Why don't we do just a quick poll? Um, if you would like to continue with the Zoom, can you just raise your hands? I have two definites. Oh. People who would prefer to be in person. Um, I, I can go in I, person than not. <laughs> I can go either way. I don't. Chris, this is Dawn. I would prefer Zoom. I don't live in Weathersfield. Okay. And Julie's good with either. <laughs> Charlie Ford in person. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, we'll probably have the option. So we'll figure that out between now and and the next meeting. Um, if we come up with a hybrid, then maybe we'll do that. But uh, I've been told so far we do not have the ability to do that. Yeah. Um, so, Peter, I was just going to say for ease, why don't we just plan on Zooming for the June meeting? And then we usually take July off anyways, and then we can figure out for August. Does okay. that make sense for everyone? Yeah. Sounds like a sounds like a phased approach. Yes, phased approach. Okay. All right, great. So thank you, everyone. Great meeting. Uh, it was a great, it's been a great month so far. And uh, we'll see you next month virtually. Bye. Bye. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Hey, Peter. Yeah. Just quick, I missed the part where. Um,